Hello and thanks for joining us for the France 24 interview. Today I'm joined by the Spanish Foreign Minister who took office in June of last year when Pedro Sánchez became the Prime Minister of Spain. Josep Borrell, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Now your full title is Minister of Foreign Affairs, European Union and Cooperation and you previously served as the President of the European Parliament. So let's start by talking about Europe and we have this unusual situation right now where the Italian Foreign Minister has been sharply critical of the French government uh, and he's done this extraordinary thing of uh, holding talks with the uh, Gilets Jaunes uh, protest movement. Um, and with that situation happening on France's southern border, uh, and with Brexit happening to the north, it seems that France's neighbours aren't quite as friendly as they used to be. So what kind of a neighbour does Spain want to be to France? Oh, we had a very, very good neighbour with France. You know, the European Union is a factory of good neighbourhood. And it makes that, in spite of any kind of incident that can happen here or there, uh, we are the best neighbours in the world. <laughs> and what's your reading of that situation currently playing out between Paris and Rome? Well, uh, I regret that two, two countries which are part of the European Union became this kind of game of uh, interference on the politics of others, which for sure is not a good thing and this kind of diplomatic attitude which uh, can create an escalation. I, I don't think it's going to happen. I think they will talk and kind of calm down. But for sure, if uh, an Italian minister goes to, to Spain without the Spanish government knowing to have talks with uh, some political parties and criticizing the Spanish government from inside and taking, taking part of the Spanish political game, it would create it would create a certain unease. The Spanish government has announced that it is appointing 1,700 new jobs uh, for people working directly on the issue of Brexit. Uh, and these people are being hired regardless of whether or not a deal is struck between uh, London and Brussels. I mean, is there a fear in Spain that Brexit is going to have a detrimental effect on Spain? Well, the Brexit is going to be detrimental for everyone. No matter how it happens, it will be a bad news for everybody. And you have to be prepared, but just in case the thing goes bad and badly and worse than expected. Now, today, you, we cannot exclude the possibility of a Brexit without agreement, and it would be not very much uh, a conscious attitude from the part of the government not be prepared for this possible situation. Now, you've sounded quite conciliatory on the subject of Brexit. Uh, you said the other day, it wouldn't be good for the UK to remain in the bloc, wanting to leave, but unable to find the door. Now, does that mean you think that the uh, remaining EU nations have been a bit too hard on the British? No, no, what I am saying is that uh, if you don't want to be part of a family and you decide to leave, and leave the home, and you cannot leave because you don't find the door to get out, you will not be very happy if you have forced to stay and then the relationship with other members of the family will not be good. I think if you want to leave, we better show you the way. Uh, and with just six weeks or so to go until the Brexit deadline, are you hopeful that a deal will be found and there'll be an orderly departure? I still have, have the, the hope that this is going to happen because I cannot imagine that the British accept uh, going out of the European Union without knowing where they are going and how this is going to happen, I think it's going to be very damaging for them, for us also, but especially for the British. I mean, of course, this big uh, sticking point of the Irish border, but there's also the issue of, of Gibraltar, which was a sticking point for a while. Is that now, in your view, completely resolved as an issue? Have we moved on from that? Well, it's been solved by the time being, but for sure as Spain continues to having the claim about sovereignty, it's going to last, we are not going to abandon that. And it's a very important thing for us that the European Union first has recognised that Gibraltar is a colony, and I understand that the British don't like it, and secondly, that any agreement between the United Kingdom and the European Union with respect to Gibraltar will have to need the agreement of Spain. So Spain has a veto right about any future agreement between the United Kingdom and the European Union about Gibraltar. 
Uh, let's move to the other side of the world now, because Spain is uh, one of the nations in the world, one of the powers in the world, uh, aligned to the United States in recognizing Juan Guaido as being the legitimate interim president of Venezuela. Uh, you were at that summit in Uruguay a couple of days ago to discuss the situation there in Venezuela. And I just wonder, how do you envisage events unfolding there? Well, we are not talking our position with respect to Venezuela as an ally of the United States. We are taking that as a part of the European Union. We decide together the Council of Foreign Relations with the European Union, and we have a, our own stance, which is quite different from the United States. We refuse categorically any kind of military intervention. This is not an issue. We don't contemplate it, and we expect it's not going to happen. In Montevideo the other day was also a difference between Mexico and Uruguay on one side and the other members of the contact group on the other. One still wanted to have a negotiation, mediation, and we want to push in order to presidential elections be held as soon as possible. And if you could give a message to Nicolas Maduro right now, what would you tell him? The best thing is to call for presidential elections as soon as possible, democratically called and under the supervision of the international community. Okay, uh, closer to home, uh, you're a Catalan, and uh, you're, of course, strongly opposed to Catalan independence efforts. How does your identity help you to approach this issue uh, in a way that's perhaps different from previous Spanish governments? Well, this government has shown uh, an important willingness, will, an important will of talking, discussing, about which is the problem and which could be the solutions. And we are very sorry that the independency part doesn't want to continue on these talks because they put impossible conditions. If they want that the right of uh, autodetermination, which is a wrong way of calling the right to secession, being recognized, that's impossible because the European Constitution, the European Union treaties and international uh, law doesn't doesn't support this claim. So if this is the way... So you think way it's not viable for the Catalans to want to have a state of their own? It doesn't add up? Well, it's not viable the secession of a part of the European Union country according with the Spanish Constitution. No? That's the fact of life. And the best thing you can do is to be completely aware of which are the reality. The reality is this one. The Mr. Torra continues claiming for a recognition of the right of secession and asking the government to be courageous in order to agree with that. It's not a matter of courage. It's a matter of respect to the Constitution and the law. So uh, where do we go to from here then? I don't know. <laughs> By the time being, the, we have to vote next week the budget and depending on the but if the budget is approved we are in one scenario if the budget is not approved we are in another one i cannot to tell you today what is going to happen next week but the, the independents have said that we are not going to vote it so let's see what's happening they have changed so many times their mind perhaps i'll change again i don't know <laughs> Maybe. Thank you very much indeed. We're going to have to leave it there. Thank uh, you. Josep Borrell, Spain's Minister of Foreign Affairs. Thank you very much indeed for speaking to France Thank you. 24. Thank you to you for watching. There's more news coming up here on France 24. Because a new page of history gets written every day. Because breaking news can't wait. Information everywhere. In all situations. On every subject. Understanding the world. Imagining the world. France 24. A different take on the news.